The Call of the Beastmen was among the first race packs to be released for Warhammer 1, and at the time, in the early days of the game, I understand they play quite well, even though they were missing a number of their more interesting units, like the Gorgon and Jabberslythe. Over the years and continuous updates, through games 1 and 2, they have fallen further and further behind the other races though, excluding the Warriors of Chaos, whose time will come in game 3. Their limited roster, and perhaps more importantly, the terrible horde gameplay and subpar mechanics, has seen them become the least played of the races in the game. Well, could that all be about to change, with the release of The Silence and the Fury in July? What will it take for the Beastmen to become not just playable, but enjoyable? In this video, I will go through some of my gripes with the Beastmen, and what can be done to fix those issues. I'll also highlight some crucial mechanics that need to appear in order to have the Beastmen live up to their potential. First up, there is the Horde Growth, or more specifically, how the player has to spend Horde Growth on individual buildings at each tier, even though they have already spent their growth to update to that tier in the first place. This double dipping into Horde Growth is undoubtedly there to slow down the player's progress toward the better units, so they don't rampage across the map too quickly. While many may not see a problem with this mechanic, it annoys the hell out of me, and makes me want to avoid having armies with a good variety of units, as I'd rather use my horde growth to get my horde to the higher tiers, than unlock buildings where I may only want to use one or two of the related units. I would much prefer the system was similar to other races, in that once you have unlocked a horde or settlement tier, you can construct any building without having to spend further growth points. Perhaps then, I wouldn't feel so constrained in my options for army composition. The second system I'd like to see reworked is the Dark Moon phase. As it currently stands, it's just a pop-up dialogue with a number of different options that the player can choose from for six or seven turns. Each of the choices has a positive effect and a negative effect that lasts for that duration. While some of the options can be quite powerful, it doesn't really live up to the description of the mechanic on the campaign selection screen. The game states that the Dark Moon is a powerful recurring event that provides significant bonuses to beastmen armies. Well, not quite. What do I think would be a more fitting representation? For the duration of the Dark Moon phase, the beastmen should have a battle mechanic activated which provides bonuses in combat. This would function in a similar fashion to the Dark Elves' murderous prowess. When the amount of damage done to the enemy forces in battle reaches a predefined threshold, the bonuses are activated for the Beastman Horde. This could be taken one step further, with each legendary lord having different buffs applied to their troops, while the mechanic is active on the battlefield. We can already see an example of something like this with the Greenskin's Battle War mechanic, with each lord having their own flavour. I believe this will be a much more engaging system than a simple multiple choice option every X number of turns, and it would also provide the player with additional tactics during the battles, where it would be wise to position your troops to take advantage of the bonuses granted. In the lore, Morsleep is a very important deity to the Beastmen, so this could also be further enhanced by allowing Beastmen to erect a shrine to Morsleep when a settlement is raised. The shrine could then provide additional boosts to the Dark Moon effects when fighting within the region or province. Let's take a look at Bestial Rage. This mechanic is comprised of a rage meter on the campaign screen, and a value that is raised by winning battles, but naturally falls off over time. Specific bonuses are tied to the player's rage level, and if it is maxed out, then a Bray Herd is spawned. This is quite similar to the Greenskin's original War mechanic, even using the same user interface elements and having the same AI controlled armies that spawn and quite often get themselves killed by being in the wrong place at the wrong time. I'm unsure how this should be changed. The obvious choice is to once again copy the greenskins and mimic their new war mechanic, where the spawned army is attached to the main force and under the player's control. While this may fit quite well, surely there is another way to implement Brayherds that's more unique to the beastmen. Moving on to the major flaw with the Beastmen, 
though it's not just limited to them. Hordes. I just don't find the Horde gameplay, where you are limited to destroying settlements, but never controlling any lands, satisfying. I find that there are two main issues for me in that regard when playing as the Beastman. Firstly, there is the issue of settlements that you have destroyed being very easy for the AI to reoccupy. At times it can be quite frustrating to destroy a series of settlements and have laid waste to a region, only to see three or four turns later that the settlements have all been occupied, either by the original faction or by other factions that are taking advantage of the power vacuum that you have created. As many have said on numerous occasions, it's like a game of whack-a-mole where you revisit the same locations again and again to destroy the same town that you have raised to the ground a dozen times before. The advantage non-Horde factions have is of course that they can retain control of the settlement, preventing the AI from just resettling it. So do we need some ways for Horde factions to prevent the AI from claiming these raid settlements in a matter of turns? Well, an effort was made within the Kai to prevent just this scenario, by having those settlements he conquers being given to an allied AI faction that can defend them and prevent the whack-a-mole merry-go-round. It has its flaws, such as the friendly AI faction being as active as a comatose sloth that has been glued to the spot, but it does the job, allowing the player to explore further afield. Do I think this is the right approach for the Beastmen? No. To address this for the Beastmen, I would implement the Bloodgrams, which are detailed in the Beastmen's army book. The Old World is the territory and the hunting ground of the Beastmen, lands they regard and refer to as their Bloodgrounds. It has always been so, since the coming of Chaos in a distant and legendary age. Bloodgrounds would be areas of the map containing one or more regions that have been destroyed by the Beastmen armies. When a settlement is raised, the player could have the option to expand their blood grounds into that region. The settlement would remain raised and the AI would not be able to rebuild it as long as the region remained a part of the blood grounds. The AI factions would need to destroy the beastman forces within the blood grounds to reclaim the region and once again be able to build up the settlement. The beastman forces could be a garrison linked to the raised settlement indicated by a beastman camp icon. While in a blood ground, the player's armies would gain campaign bonuses like additional army movement, ambush chance, casualty replenishment, and so on. The blood grounds would give your armies a launching point for raids into enemy regions and a place to withdraw to to lick your wounds. The second issue is the lack of focus in the campaign. Having a series of goals, like the Wood Elves now have with restoring the sacred woodlands, would make the campaign more engaging. I find just wandering around the map even if I have decided on wiping out a certain faction or race, does not hold my interest for long. Sure, there are the long-term goals as defined by the victory conditions, but having smaller goals to achieve that can keep the player interested and reward them accordingly could go a long way to improving the Beastman's campaigns. So what might be a good series of goals for the Beastman to achieve? Well, I think this is where Herdstones could come into play. To the Beastmen, the most sacred of all the dark places in the woodlands are the monolithic herdstones. These are the meeting grounds of the Beastmen and take the form of dire and foreboding standing stones. These are often immensely ancient, hewn or even grown from fallen meteors into twisted mouths, skulls and spires that hurt the eye, decorated with the runes of chaos in the dark tongue. The herdstones are always erected in places of magical significance, usually over one of the baleful meteors that brought the beastmen into being all those years ago. They are well hidden, and they are almost always beastmen warherds and minotaur tribes nearby. About each herdstone is to be found the great piles of offerings, rusting weapons and armor taken from long defeated enemies. The floor of the clearing in which the herdstone stands is often strewn with ankle-deep carpet of bones, the remains of the captives taken in battle and sacrificed by the brave shamans to the dark glory of the ruinous powers. Most herdstones are located far from human settlements, for no such settlement founded near one has survived more than a single season. Any intrusion within a hundred leagues of a herdstone will cause every warherd in the region to descend upon the intruder with unrelenting wrath. 
there could be several herdstones dotted across the map for the player to interact with. They could work in a similar fashion to the Wood Elves Sacred Woodlands in that they have several tiers, aka goals, for the player to reach. The individual tiers can provide the player with additional bonuses to the campaign and units on the battlefield, and can even open up access to army abilities and unique units in different regions. To reach the different tiers, the player would have to perform dark rituals at the herdstones, which will cause spawned armies, whether other beastmen tribes or the armies of men or elves, to appear and attempt to prevent the ritual's completion. The player would have to defend the ritual site until its completion. The herdstones and bloodgrounds could also be tied together, with bloodgrounds being limited to the region that herdstones are found in, until the player starts to expand into the neighboring regions. The regions around the herdstone should also be full of chaos corruption, making it very dangerous for any non-chaos armies to venture into them. The campaign victory conditions could be adapted so the player has to build up a certain number of herdstones, rather than the standard destroy factions X and Y. I think this combination of herdstones and bloodgrounds could make the beastman campaigns more engaging while not destroying their flavour. So, these changes and additions are what I would like to see. But what about you? What are you expecting or wanting from the Beastman overhaul? Well, once more we find ourselves at the end of the video. I'd like to thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed my content, I ask you to leave a like or comment, or perhaps even subscribe. As always, I'd like to end the video with a shout out to my patrons. A big thanks to Hot Apple Pie, Cody Bonds, Alexander, and Solarith Magneto. I'm Great Hager, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.